prayed and believed your whole life. And here you are. Explain that to me. What do you say to people that are offended by your show? Because you pray to Jesus in every episode. If we disown him, he'll disown us. When a 12-year-old watches his mother dying of cancer, a God who would allow that is not worth believing in. Life is really a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury and signifying nothing. Name? Uh, Wheaton. Josh Wheaton. Philosophy 150. You might want to think about a different uh, instructor. Come on, man, it can't be that bad. Think uh, Roman Coliseum. People cheering for your death. I am Professor Radisson. This is philosophy 150. I would like to bypass senseless debate altogether and jump to the conclusion which every sophomore is already aware of. There is no God. All that I require from each of you is that you fill in the papers I've just given you with three little words. God is dead. Mr. Wheaton, is something wrong. I can't do what you want. I'm a Christian. If you cannot bring yourself to admit that God is dead, then you will need to defend the antithesis. I think of Jesus as my friend. You think Jesus is God? I don't want to disappoint him. So your acceptance of this challenge may be the only meaningful exposure to God and Jesus they'll ever have. Hey, to me. He's All right, there. folks, uh, there you have it. A very exciting trailer from the uh, new movie, God's Not Dead. And uh, joining us is the uh, star of uh, the movie, Kevin Sorbo. Thank you very much. My for pleasure. Coming Thanks in. for having me it. here. Great to see you. Uh, so that is a fascinating premise. I mean, ah. you, you walk into it. You're the teacher. Yes. You walk into class, college class, and the mm -hmm. first thing you say is, all right, you're going to get a failing grade unless you uh, swear on that. Uh, it sounds like something Barack Obama might do. <laughs> unless you swear <laughs> on that, you know, under, under penalty of perjury, that, that yeah. God is, is not existent. He's dead. It's, it's shocking to think that there are atheist college professors in America. Yes, I was yes. absolutely shocked. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know what's amazing about this movie is at the end of it, they roll credits of about 50 different court cases to prove that this isn't some fictional Made story up, going yeah, on here. Yeah. Uh, this is fact, and it's, it's going on right now. And, uh, you know, it, it's an interesting story because it, it, it takes both sides of the issue and they collide together. And we're already getting a lot of, uh, they've got well over a million hits on, on YouTube already, and we're getting a lot of, uh, you know, the atheists are stirring up. And I, I find it interesting that, that people don't believe in something get so angry about it. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, so. you say the atheists, mm -hmm. and you know, I've had, uh, mm -hmm. I've debated mm -hmm. the, the the heads of these groups, sure. which I don't believe they represent. I don't know how many atheists there are in the world, mm -hmm. and I don't know how big their membership are in these groups. But I don't believe these groups represent atheists. I think most atheists are. I don't believe, and I don't care. But you get this handful yes. that go to court for, and they're offended supposedly by yeah. every little reference to God, and then they claim it's against the Constitution, which it's not. Yeah. So I it's, know. It's, it's it's crazy. It's, it's, you know, you got extremes on both sides, and I, I get it, and I understand it. But I, you know, I, I when I moved from Minnesota to LA, I lived in Santa Monica, and for and for decades they've had this nativity scene. Well, last year it was taken down because of the atheists. Yeah. And I said, you're offended by that, but I think 95 percent are offended that you had it taken down. Right. But that majority doesn't rule anymore. Well, it's because the groups like that demand complete tolerance and often no tolerance in return. Welcome and that's, to Hollywood. That's the way. That's the way. Well, it's funny you say that. <laughs> All right. But but this is a great movie, and and yeah. it's gotten great response, and. Yeah. Um, and there have been a, a, a number of, uh, of uh, conservative-themed movies mm -hmm. that have uh, sure. made a resurgence uh, as of late. Um, you say, welcome to Hollywood. Do you think that it's changing? Can it change? I think it's changing a little bit. I mean, uh, by the way, the movie opens March 21st. When yeah. That's okay. this, no, this sure. Friday Absolutely. coming up. Um, you know, you, you, look at, you look at Jim Caviezel when he, did, when he did The Passion with Mel Gibson. Huge, huge bucks. It, you know, ho Hollywood was, was dissing the movie the whole time it was being made. Big money, they perked up a little bit. Then along came Blindside a few years later. Yeah. Blindside, I think, was the kickoff point. They said, you know what, there's an audience out there we're not serving. So I think these faith-based movies are starting to pick up uh, quite a bit of steam. And you got Noah coming out. I mean, most of Hollywood, they, they'll never want to do a, t a book from the New Testament, of course. So, yeah, well, true. But, but it, it's, it's, it's an interesting road that we're on right now. Because I also think the cheese factor is going away. They're getting better scripts. They're getting better actors. They're getting better... You know, the photography and, and you know, it's, it's, they're, they're coming out to be a lot more interesting to look at. And 
they're not preaching to the choir as much as they used to. I mean, I want the choir to come to this movie, but I want those independent guys, those agnostics, yeah, yeah, yeah. to take a peek and so go, well, maybe there's So there's mass appeal in them is yeah, what you're you saying. Yeah, ho you hope there is. I mean, yeah. this movie is definitely going to create a lot of buzz and a lot of controversy. And what, what, what do you think could be the most controversial uh, uh, aspect of it? Well, I, I mean, I, I think it's just the fact that the, I play this atheist professor that challenges a student, and number one, people say that never happens. It does oh, happen. It, it does yeah, happen that sure way. It does. I've got a niece and nephew that went to a university I won't mention where, and they ran into quite a bit there. Yeah, yeah, no, you, it's very so. frightening. I have a 14 year old boy, and you, you wonder where, you, uh, where are you going to send your kid to school and what is going to pass for a professor? Right here at Rutgers, they're trying to ban Condoleezza Rice, who's been invited and has it accepted to be the commencement uh, 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 you know, person to speak it's, at the commencement. It's incredible. They want it. There's 200 professors who want her out because they, they don't agree with her. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> there's no tolerance. They scream for freedom of speech, yeah. but they have none yeah. if you disagree with what they say. And it's incredible to me. I've got friends on both sides. And independence and all that. And to me, it's like I don't get angry at somebody if they disagree with my point of view. There's, the Hollywood and most of the left deals in emotion and anger. And stifling the, free speech, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, stuff well, which. Do as I say, not as I do. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, you have a book out also called True Strength. I do, True Strength. It's, it's actually based on. Um, uh, I, I got very sick at the se end of season five on Hercules. A lot of people aren't aware of this. I suffered three strokes. Three strokes? I had an aneurysm, I lost some clavicle that opened up completely. Oh my God. And. Uh, uh, went two into my balance and one went to my uh, vision center. So I, it, it took me three full years to recover from it. It was a long, slow process for me. Uh, I know what my limitations are, but I wanted to write this book to get out there to show people that, you know, bad things do happen. Because I was a pretty healthy looking guy wow. back in the Hercules yeah, yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. And well, you I was, said you were 230 or so, I was right? 230. I was lifting up, weights yeah. two hours a day. And I mean, I was always, I, it, it's a strange thing to have happen. Doctors can't figure out why it happened, but the book really deals with. Okay, what do you do when that roadblock hits you? Do you blame God? Do you blame other people? Or do you take responsibility for yourself and stop pointing fingers at everybody else? Look at the man in the mirror and push forward. And for me, it was like, I'm not going to let this thing slow me down. I'm just not going to. And it's been amazing the response from people. So if they go to truestrengthbook.com, they can check it out and pick it up on Amazon. That's great. It, it, later so, on in, the, in this hour, we have a, a, a hijack from ABC News, their person of the week, uh, uh, one of the uh, athletes, uh, a veteran who was on the Special Olympic team that beat the Russians. Amazing. Lost a leg. I and, saw some of that on TV. Yeah, and and what amazing. he said was, and, and you could relate to this, he said, I I'll never question that I served my country. I'll never question what happened mm. to me because it opened up these opportunities for me. So what a sure. positive, wonderful way well, to look at things. And you have to find that. You, you have yeah. to find that way to make I mean, uh, if you, you got to make uh, tragedies, comedies real quick in your life. Otherwise, yeah. you're in for a long life. A absolutely. All right. Now, I, I want you to hear, before we get to, I want to talk about your, your physical uh, being, okay. and I want to talk sure. about... Um, uh, this um, uh, life-saving uh, antioxidant regimen uh, that you're involved with and all that and the uh, hormones well, and, and it, well it's interesting because yeah. here I am with yeah. seeing, seeing your magazine Newsmax. right out there <laughs> and deals with imagining at 110 anti-aging breakthroughs yeah. and I'm involved with a company called Fluitech and it, it deals with uh, you take your own urine sample like, like every two to three weeks and you find out where you are where your antioxidant level is and it'll tell you exactly what you need to be doing in your life to make yourself healthier and better, what you should be eating, what you shouldn't be eating, and uh, exercise is always an important part no, of everybody's absolutely. life. No, absolutely. I try to get a workout every single day. I know people always complain they don't have time. You can find time. you got to make you know, time. But even before you go to bed at night, lay on the floor and do some stretches, do some yoga, do something. And it's, it's a pretty easy thing to do, but people just get lazy about it. And I'll tell you right now, if you stretch before you go to bed at night, you'll sleep better. Really? You'll sleep better. All right, better. see, I do the treadmill late, too that's late. Not a, that's, that's not a uh, while. Sometimes it too, gets you too yeah. pumped up. But, but let me ask you a question about, yeah. uh, you, you mentioned, um, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. You mentioned, oh, the, the urine uh, test that you take. Yes. You know, how would you find, you say your antioxidants. In other words, it is a strip, or is it specific, it's, different different antioxidants that you measure on your own? It, it's, it's, base, it's just basically a strip. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's, okay. You just, it, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah, it comes yeah, in a box. It's easy to do thing at home, and it lets you know where you are, where your health level is. That's interesting. It's I'm a, a, I'm a devout amazing product. Hypo Fluitech, check it out. Fluitech. I'm, I will. I'm a devout, uh, devout hypochondriac. Is there, there you go. Knows. I love so, that. Uh, you know, I monitor <laughs> everything all the time. I, I want you to listen to Bill Maher. Um, okay. look, I mean, I hate to put you through it. I don't know you that well to torture you like this, but but Bill Maher is, uh, you know, he's the reason I don't have HBO. He owns part, a minority share of the New York Mets, which I, I, how he gets away with that. I mean, could Rush Limbaugh own a minority share of any team? He tried football once. Yeah. They wouldn't let him in. Uh, but uh, play this card. He was on his show. He was trashing yeah. the movie Noah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he was uh, talking about how ridiculous it is that people believe in God. And then he started trashing God. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Hey, God, you know you're kind of a d when you're in a movie with Russell Crowe and you're the one with anger issues. <laughs> you know, conservatives are always going on about how Americans are losing their values and their morality. 
Well, maybe it's because you worship a guy who drowns babies. And then God's genius plan after he kills everyone is to repopulate the world with a new crop of the same assholes who f***ed him up the first time. With predictable results. He kills millions more. If we were a dog and God owned us, the cops would come and take us away. Why are we getting our morals out of this book? Why do people follow any of it? Hey, God, you know you're... All right, I guess that was starting over again. Yeah. So your reaction? You know, I did politically incorrect a couple times, and I, I, all I can do is feel sad for the guy because I think he's a very angry, lonely man, and he takes it. Comedy comes from uh, comes from anger anyway, and uh, you know what are you going to say when a guy talks like this? And he, I, I wonder what happened to him in his lifetime that has such a hate. Because the atheists I've met, not all of them are angry. I've got some very good friends who are atheists, and they, they just don't believe. They simply don't believe. We've had great debates about it and things like that. Uh, there's no reason to even to try to talk to a guy like that because he has so much hate. I said a joke one time on his show, Politically Incorrect, I had a big laugh. During the commercial break, he leaned over, he says, you're good looking. Oh, yeah. Wow, that insecure? Oh, yeah. There's no question about it. So wow. It's, it's like, you know what? question about it. So wow. it's, it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm the same reason I won't get HBO because of, because of that Good. guy. Good, see that? It's I'm just not, not the, worth I'm my not, time. No, <laughs> you know? I will not support him. I and cannot it's support just, him. It's, it's sad to me that he has to have so much anger and hate. And, and, and talk about the morals. Morals are declining. And, and I don't care if you're religious or not. Morals are declining. The country is going under. We're getting worse and worse. And everything is okay, according to half the population in this country. Yeah, not no, everything no, is okay. No. How political are you? Um, I'm political enough. You I know, mean, I mean, I, I grew up in a very liberal household. I was Walter Mondale and Hubert yeah, Humphrey, you know. Okay. I mean, I'm a Minnesota guy. Yeah. But the first time I could vote, I voted for Reagan. My dad was beside himself. And I said, Dad, I got a feeling that, you know, that Carter's going to go down as the worst president this country's ever had. Well, and until now, you've until been right. Now, until, <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that uh, I, I, I don't vote with anger. I vote with my head and my gut and my heart. I look at the person. I look at what they stand for and what, what they believe in. And I, I just know during the last election, last two elections, if you didn't vote for Obama, you're considered a racist. And I said, what does, that to, what does racism have to do with it? I, I, I have white actor friends who said, well, I'm going to vote for him because he's black. It'll be cool to have a black president. I said, but that's racist. That, you're right. If I said I'm voting for McCain because he's a white guy, that would be you'd crazy. call me a racist. Right. But it's such a weird reverse thing that it's, it's, no matter if you say anything negative about anybody nowadays, they want to play the race card. And, and, and it's insane. I just don't believe in his politics. Yeah. When somebody says I want to fundamentally change America, if my wife said I want to fundamentally change you before we got married, I would have walked out the back door. And so to me, it's like, what, vote with your heart. Use your common sense. But today, people don't want facts. They don't want the truth. And that's sad. And, to me. and Hillary, they're going to give the same protection to because you're a woman. Benghazi and IRS are bigger than Watergate. If this was a Republican in office right now, they'd be screaming. The, the press would be screaming. I mean, they would. But even, I mean, I remember before the last election. Did you come back tomorrow? Guys on MSNBC were even oh saying, yes, we're biased. Get over of it. Of course. They admit it. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> A pleasure, right, and, and, and great to talk to you. God's Not Dead, the movie opens March 21st, yes. and the book, True Strength, an amazing story. I had no idea of, uh, of your, studio kept it very quiet, your survival so. and, mm -hmm. uh, and how you dealt with all that. Uh, great to talk to you. All right, folks, uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to be joined by the panel, and we have a lot to talk about. We'll uh, take a look at uh, Hollywood and, and uh, why these uh, movies like uh, God's Not Dead are, are doing so well. And uh, then at the uh, bottom of uh, the hour, we're going to take a look again at the plane. Where could it be? What could have happened? Is it on the ground? Could it be used as a terror tool? All that and much, much more straight ahead as we roll along on the final hour of the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. The Steve Malzberg Show.